beautiful people! <laughs> Welcome to my third episode in my channel about the Erasmus Mundus journey. Today I want to talk to you about what happened exactly after the moment I received the scholarship up to the moment when I ended up in the first destination of my Erasmus Mundus adventure, which is Lithuania. So if you are any curious, any interested, then stay with me in this video and I will tell you more about the whole preparation and the whole experience of how it was to prepare myself mentally and not only mentally for this adventure. Yeah, so what there is to do before the program actually starts. In my case, there was actually not that much. I got accepted by the end of May. And basically from this moment until, yeah, the beginning of June, uh, a lot of things happened. I was added to the WhatsApp group of the participants, of the members who also received the scholarship. So I was able to actually uh, stalk them a little bit and see from which countries were they coming from. And then a few days later, probably in the beginning of June, we received all of the documents, which is the uh, letter of the award, uh, a contract, and all of the documents that we needed to sign for yeah, the committee, the secretary of the university, um, in order to confirm our places. Uh, then, after signing all of the documents, already in our WhatsApp group, uh, there were things happening, everyone was introducing themselves, that was very exciting, and the group itself was created by the first cohort. So I uh, am a participant of the second cohort of this program and there is, there is only one group before us participating in this particular program. So I can say that this uh, whole thing is, uh, is an experiment. No one actually finished the program yet. Our uh, first cohort, they are currently, currently in their last semester, so they are writing their uh, master thesis in Portugal, in Lisbon. And uh, the WhatsApp group was created by them, so they offered to us to actually organize a meeting for all of us to join. It was uh, a sort of Q&A and their tips and advice on how to prepare before coming to Lithuania. And here I must say that these meetings are mostly for people who are coming from non-European countries who actually have a long journey uh, before coming to Europe, who needs to prepare their visas, their documents and, well, for whom the climate changes immensely. So this meeting was mostly for them, however, I remember joining it as well. Uh, at that time I was actually traveling, I was, I was on the train to London, so I could join on the train Wi-Fi just to say hi, take a, a picture all together, uh, but I wasn't really uh, participating that much. So there were a lot of... Um, questions and topics that were touched upon. We were talking about the requirements, we were talking about the university, we were talking about the weather, we were talking about the animals that were allowed or not allowed to be brought with ourselves. Many, many things, but that already gave us the sense of creating the community, of belonging to this group of people. So I remember that moment as, uh, as a start of this adventure, actually getting to know the people with whom I am going to study. Yeah, so then another thing that comes is that when you're moving to another country, which for me is nothing new at this point, is actually looking for the accommodation. Uh, I must admit, uh, every time I'm moving for a different program project, the accommodation is usually set up. I don't have to worry about these things. So that was actually the second time in my life when I actually had to look 
actively for the accommodation and the place that I was going to live in for the next six months. Uh, first of all, of course, I texted the university accommodation, uh, the student accommodation. However, the reply that I received was not really satisfactory. Um, the rooms in that place were very cheap. It was only 100 euro per month to live in a student accommodation in Vilnius. However, I was not allowed to live there with anyone else. The university didn't agree on that, so we had to look for another place. And this is where we actually both found another accommodation. It was a private accommodation shed. Uh, I will show you a little bit of the pictures because it looks quite impressive. Shed is the chain of a new private student halls um, that is in Vilnius and in Riga. It was not even opened yet when I was applying for it. So they were opening the whole building by the end of August. I arrived at the beginning of September. So when we moved in, I kind of expected everything to be ready. I don't even know where this idea came from. However, it didn't turn out to be true necessarily. Everything was still, okay, not everything, but some things were still under constructions. Um, so that was one tiny, um, minus for this whole place. However, however, the place was amazing. The rooms were big. We had our own bathroom, our own kitchen. Everything was new. Everything was clean. So um, that was definitely a really good choice. The only thing is that the price for this accommodation was uh, not one of the cheapest ones. So that was uh, 500 euro per room only for one person. So that was already quite much, I think, for a uh, standard, for a uh, capital uh, Eastern European city, I think 500 euro per month is actually quite much. Um, the benefits that were included with this accommodation was that uh, we had a gym, so that was uh, downstairs. Uh, it was a very modern uh, facility with all of the equipment that was needed. We had a common zone where there were a lot of parties organized, a big kitchen, a lot of different sofas. We had TVs uh, with playstations, we had pool, we had darts, we had uh, foosball, we had, um, what else we had? Uh, we had the big terrace. So there were many, many things that were um, there for us to use. Therefore, the price so high. And well, the easiness, I think that we paid for comfort, for how easy it was to actually find it. Few clicks on the website and the room was booked. And then later on, uh, I think somewhere in August, uh, maybe we received the details to log in uh, and create our university accounts. So we were able to log in into MRU University and uh, yes, this is when all of our timetables uh, was shown up. Not yet, not at this point, but later on. Uh, but then in the portal, then we received the message that on September 5th, there is the welcome week for all of us. So by the 5th of September, we all had to be in Lithuania to participate in the welcoming ceremony, uh, followed by two intensive weeks of classes. So this was actually something I was really excited about. Finally coming back to this university life, having lectures from morning until evening, getting this routine back on. Um, yes, I, I was really uh, looking for it, yes. Uh, so to get to Lithuania from Poland is actually not that difficult. I booked the Flix bus uh, going from Warsaw to Vilnius that costs probably around 25 euro and it goes for eight hours during the night. So it's basically very, very convenient. I mean, there's a few of them going, but I always choose the one during the night. It's almost like a teleportation if you can sleep on the bus during the night. 
um, that period in time, uh, July, August, September, were quite intense in my life and there was a lot of things happening. I was uh, still living in Prague, I was going back to Poland, then I was coming back to Prague to actually move out, to take all of my stuff back to Poland, to uh, give away the keys to my apartment in Prague, and then I was in Poland again for some time and certain health issues uh, came on the way, appeared that unfortunately didn't allow me to go to Lithuania and start uh, and participate in the welcoming ceremony together with other um, participants, other colleagues. I had to postpone my uh, travel to Lithuania for about a week, which was not which was not too bad. I arrived to Lithuania for the second week of the intensive course. I participated in the first one online. Of course, I informed the university, I informed people, so everyone knew what was happening and knew about my reasons. And then when I arrived for the second intensive week, oh, I was I was there. I was there. I started my Erasmus Mundus experience. It happened very suddenly, it happened very quickly. It was not something at that time that I really looked for to happen because of different external reasons. So it was more of the task to do, travel to Lithuania. But then when I actually arrived, and when the intensive book finished, because it was very intense, then I had some time to actually breathe in, breathe out and realize that this whole adventure actually started. So I was actually planning on starting this channel much earlier and go a few step by step through everything that was happening at the time. However, as I said already, uh, better later than never. So I remember recording certain videos from Shed, from my accommodation, so now I will just uh, put them in so you can see how my accommodation looked like. <music> today. Uh, thank you very much for listening to my personal experience and to uh, following what's uh, happening, what was happening during uh, this time. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you grasped an idea about the whole preparation for starting the Erasmus Mundus experience. I hope that you enjoyed uh, looking around Shed. And then of course if you are liking, if you're enjoying then please like the video, subscribe to the channel, maybe share it to someone else. I will be really happy if it's gonna happen and again if you have any questions regarding the application, regarding the life in Vilnius, uh, regarding anything that I'm talking about then please feel free to contact me either in the comments or in any of my uh, social media accounts. I will see you then! Bye!